Good morning. Welcome inside another travel vlog. I'm down in Maryland right now. I flew this morning from Manchester, New Hampshire, MHT, down to BWI, Baltimore, Washington International, nonstop on Southwest. $99 flight, which is more or less the regular price. It wasn't steeply discounted like some stuff is right now. That's all right, though. Um, got a Ford F-150 rental from Enterprise. A little bit more expensive than last week. It was um, 51 bucks for the uh, day, which is kind of pricey for the truck. But I was like, you know what? I want the truck. I don't really care that much. You know, I don't mind patronizing the airlines and the rental cars right now because I really want them to be around. I want them and need them to be around for when the world gets back to normal. You know, I can still travel. So the um, I'm sitting here in the F-150 in a parking lot of a shopping center in Hanover, Maryland. Hardee's is right back there behind me. I'm going to go through the uh, drive through in just a minute here. I'd like to eat inside, but we all know that's not open right now. And that is the first Hardee's I ever went to. It was me and Will a uh, number of years ago. So long ago, I didn't have this YouTube channel, didn't vlog nothing. But I'm going to go there. Just sitting here is bringing back memories. Sitting in this shopping plaza. There's a Dollar Tree over there. I'm going to grab a couple of quick things. And this is um, south. Like, if you're not familiar with the area, BWI is south of Baltimore in a pretty nice area more or less, and I'm going to go over to the Delmarva Peninsula today, cross the Bay Bridge over to Maryland's eastern shore, and just drive down uh, toward the uh, Virginia part of the peninsula, and then just work my way back up through Virginia, through Maryland, Delaware, and then tomorrow morning I'm flying home from the Philadelphia airport nonstop to Boston Logan on American Airlines. That flight was 49 bucks. really good fare on that one. And that is the whole thing about a quick 24-hour trip. Um, just something to do for the weekend. Just something to do. As you know, if you watch these videos, I'm going out of my mind with boredom with the whole world being closed. So even though everything's closed down here too, I'm going to ride around, get some good food. See if I can find a hiking trail that you know, might be open. It's in New Hampshire. A lot of the hiking trails are still open. Hopefully it's the same down here. And I've I've been to the Delmarva Peninsula, but only portions of Delaware and like far north part of it in Maryland. I've never really like thoroughly done just a Del Delmarva Peninsula trip. So I'm really looking forward to this today. And I am going to get on with things. Here we go. And one more thing I forgot to mention. There were about 10 people on that flight this morning. The plane holds 189. That's just, uh, yeah, that's why the airlines and the travel services are like on the verge of bankruptcy. Actually, feels really good to be patronizing them. Just got Hardy's breakfast, which is really good. I actually like their burgers way more than the breakfast, and the breakfast is really good. So I'll probably go here again later on today for a burger. But yeah, this is just America. I love fast food. Oh, Maryland State House, Annapolis. All right, so on the way to the Bay Bridge to get over the Chesapeake Bay over to the Delmarva Peninsula, the highway that leads over to the bridge from the Baltimore area basically goes right through Annapolis, which is somewhere that I've never been. Annapolis is the capital of Maryland. So I'm like, I'm going to spend some time, go see it, park the truck, walk around, park on the street for free. Some of the parking was free, some had a meter. But not real crowded, so it's real easy to park. It wouldn't be if the state house was in session or the economy was going. But lots of people out walking around, which was a good sight to see. Um, beautiful day. It's about 70, bright, sunny day. 
So that was a really, really uh, relaxing time. I walked around for about an hour, just t-shirt and jeans. Don't even need a sweatshirt right now. It's a great feeling. So obviously the state capitol itself, the building was closed, so there were no tours going on or no um, you know, self-guided tours. I, I, I mean, I expected that. But there was just a lot of people out walking around. Such a good feeling. And I learned from the uh, outdoor plaque that they had. This is the oldest state house in the nation still in legislative use. It looks pretty small from the outside. Does look very old. It didn't really look like a state house. It just looked like any other building in this uh, city. It was hard to find it um, when I was driving around. I had to use the maps to get to it. Because normally when you go to a state house, it's the biggest thing for blocks around and there's all kinds of wide open lawns on every side of it. Not really the case here. Like it had lawns, which I, you know, walked around and hung out on for a little bit, but they weren't that big. So, so that was enjoyable. That was, um, it almost felt like I got to do an activity today. I'm not sure just parking and walking around is much of a like an event or anything like that but it felt good to do something where there were other people around so now i'm going to head back out on the road and head towards the bay bridge go over to the peninsula and check out delmarva peninsula coming up to the bay bridge two dollar and fifty cent toll Okay, that was a little odd. The signs leading up to it said $2.50, and the sign and uh, the website said $2.50, but at the actual toll it said it's $4. So who the heck knows? I got the easy pass through Enterprise. Which I don't normally do. I avoid toll roads at all costs usually, but for something like this, there's just no way to get over here without the toll bridge. This whole thing, I think, is like four miles long or something like that. Probably hard to see it on the video, but there's a couple of uh, big ships out there a few miles out that I can see. I wonder if they're oil tankers. So so few people are driving right now that there's a, you know, if you follow the news cycles, there's uh, in like the business news, the uh, price of oil is plummeting and the tankers are just anchoring offshore because the prices are so bad they can't sell it. Yeah, I can't look at my phone right now because I'm driving, but I'm trying to show you over there. Got some big spans of the bridge coming up. This is really cool. I've never been over this bridge before. a lot of boats out there. So that other span of the bridge over there is uh, the other direction, one eastbound, one westbound.
So that's the Delmarva Peninsula in front of us that we're coming out onto. I know this clip is long, but I'm going to keep it rolling all the way across the bridge. That was fun just going over that and getting that view. So headed down towards um, the Virginia part of the peninsula. And then from there, I don't know, just, just go down uh, probably, I don't know, if all the way to the point, but a good ways down into Virginia and then uh, work back up through Delaware. It's one in the afternoon. Um, I have all day. My flight's not till 7 a.m. tomorrow. So right over the bridge, there was um, some shopping plazas and fast food and gas stations and supermarkets and things like that right off the highway. But that only lasted a few miles. Now it's just rural and flat. Yeah, the Delmarva Peninsula is very flat. The highest point I read was only 102 feet. Just driving along and there's a little tiny airplane doing all kinds of crazy maneuvers. Try my best to show it to you. There it is. It's a crop duster. So I know that footage was really quick, but that was the best I could do while driving. But man, that when I saw that thing at first, I thought it was literally crashing because it was going so close to the ground. I'm glad I got that on video so you all can see that I'm not exaggerating about it. It was just do. I saw it do like three loops. Like go back up, then go really low to the ground, like you just saw, it, and uh, go up again, come back down, and it's going right over the road. And I thought it was literally crashing. <laughs> and I was like, "Holy shit! I'm about to see a plane crash." And the first thought I had was, "Don't crash the truck, but take out my phone and get this on video." But now, don't get me wrong. I'm very glad that's not what it was. Just some crazy pilot. But always something interesting to see on these trips, it seems like. Still driving on Route 50 towards uh, Salisbury, Maryland. Nice, relaxing, rural ride. This is just what I needed. I'll show you the scenery.
All right, it's sometime later. I've been driving around exploring Salisbury, Maryland. Went, uh, saw like the commercial district with the shopping plazas and that kind of thing. Saw downtown, saw the Salisbury Regional Airport, which is the only airport on the Delmarva Peninsula with commercial flights. Just uh, American Airlines regionals, that's all they got there. Uh, the little regional jets, and I think they have like one or maybe two flights a day to Charlotte, and that's it. And I actually thought about flying into that airport today, but I didn't because I would have had to connect in Charlotte from Boston, and that would have took up half the day, so I didn't want to, you know, use up half the day doing that. That's why I opted for the non-stop flight to Baltimore. A really nice area, the airport, um, only a few miles out of Salisbury, but really, really rural. Really nice area. I'm just having a nice rural ride. Not a whole lot going on today. Just good to be doing something out and about. Going to find a um, parking lot to pull into. I'm heading back into Salisbury and look at some maps and figure out the uh, next steps from here. All right, so I'm about a half hour southeast of Salisbury. Pulled into a state park thinking it would be closed, but I saw a couple of cars coming out, and it's open. It's open. I was just put this in the maps as a destination because I figured, well, you know, somewhere to go, nice ride, and it is open. Here's the truck for this trip. So I pulled in here fully expecting to have to turn around at a closed gate. But here's the information sign. Notice, Maryland State Parks are open with some restrictions. So this just absolutely made my day that this state park um, is open for the trails. So I was not expecting this at all. It's 4.38 in the afternoon. So according to all the signage and the notices I just read, it's open till sunset, so that's where I'm gonna be till sunset, and then we'll figure out the rest of the day after that. But man, I I put this in the map in Salisbury and GPSed it, expecting to have a nice ride, get here and find a closed gate. Or maybe like a parking area on the side of the road with no gate and the hiking could have been open. But it's just full blown state park open, gates up. This is awesome. So I have no idea what's in here, um, hiking trails and stuff, I assume, according to the signage, but let's go. Driving down the park road, real nice scenery in here. So this area of the Delmarva Peninsula is wooded, but a lot of it was just flat, open farmland. I didn't look too closely at the map, kind of just winging it here on the directions. Yep, this is just what I needed. Now I can actually say I did something today. There's a little amphitheater in here. So there's not as many hiking trails as I thought. It's mostly like camping and there's a lake over there with like people fishing, but it's still fun. Still, um, still enough to do.
still in the park, back in the truck. I decided um, I wanted to see Virginia while well, it's still daylight. Um, obviously, I've been to Virginia many times, but not the part of it that's on the Delmarva Peninsula. So I'm going to head down there. I think it's only, what, maybe 10, 15 minutes or so from the state line. But I want some time to explore that area um, in daylight, so I'm headed down there right now. And I'm not sure I ever told you, this is called Pocomoak River State Park. And it is just a beautiful day down here. Like in New England, it's been cold and rainy the last few weeks. So down this way today, 71 degrees and sunny. It's just so nice. I've been in a t-shirt all day. So I just put into the GPS as a destination. Um, country 99.3, the radio station down here. It's a classic country station that plays a really good mix of like uh, a few things from today. A lot of 90s, a lot of 80s, 00s, and some stuff that's older. Just the music that I love that you don't hear on the radio that much, especially in the Northeast. So I'm going to go find the radio tower for that, drive by it, you know, see what it looks like. Um, one of my uh, odd hobbies that I've talked about in these vlogs before. So that's the destination. Going to get rolling. Entering Virginia right up here. Welcome to Virginia. Like, I've never understood Virginia's state slogan. Like, it's a good state, but what the heck kind of slogan is Virginia is for lovers? But we are now in Virginia. I'm gonna pull into this rest area right up here. Hopefully the parking is at least open so I can look at a map for a minute. All right, so not only was the rest area open, uh, the bathrooms were open, the parking's open. It's like like normal day. It's awesome. And I walked up to um, to the entrance to the restroom, and there was an attendant there, and. Um, I asked him, like, do I need to have a mask on to go in the restroom? And he's like, nah. <laughs> so, breath of fresh air in Virginia so far. <laughs> it's real nice. So here's what the scenery looks like driving south onto the uh, part of the Delmarva Peninsula that's in the state of Virginia. The radio tower for the country station is coming up here on the left. I've been listening to it for a few hours. Really good station. Or not, maybe not a few hours, but an um, hour or so since I've been able to pick up the signal. There it is over there. It's a little bit later, sun's starting to go down. Oh, actually, it's most of the way down. It looks way brighter on this video than it actually is for some reason. Uh, I went to the town of Only Virginia, O-N-L-E-Y, and um, which is like the most commercial center Virginia has on their part of the peninsula. Uh, just driving through Delmar, Virginia. And um, yeah, like there was a Walmart and a Food Lion grocery store and some gas stations, but there's not much by way of um, like retail restaurants or anything down here, which is totally fine. I love this nice rural area. So I went, r roughly speaking, almost halfway, or maybe not quite halfway, but I went a, a good deal into the Virginia portion of the Delmarva Peninsula. And it is 8 o'clock at night. My flight's at 7, home from Philadelphia. I'm still probably going to eat something. And um, going to eat something somewhere. And I got about a three and a half hour ride up to Philly from here. But plenty of time to take, uh, you know, a nap somewhere along the way and have a nice leisurely ride. I'm enjoying this so much. This area is very, very, very livable. I like it down here a lot. So that's the update. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. 
All right, one more thing. I'll tell you guys this story before it gets dark and you can't see me anymore. So I was sitting in the Food Lion supermarket parking lot down there in Only, Virginia for probably 30 minutes. I oh, thought that was a cop up ahead, but it wasn't. I'm not supposed to be using a phone while driving. And I'm sitting here vlogging. But anyway, I was sitting in that parking lot for like 30 minutes because I was really tempted to hit the uh, Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel and go right down over that. Um, anyway, I uh, got distracted by something there for a second. I was really, really, really tempted to um, go down there because it's only like 40, 45 minutes from there to the Bay Bridge Tunnel. And I've never been over it before. And I was like, all right, how would that work logistically? Because I was thinking of it like I don't want to go over and come back because it's a $14 toll each way, which, yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, so I wanted to come through Virginia and go through, like, Hampton Roads, Norfolk area, hit the highway, head up through Richmond, and pick up 95, go through D.C., Baltimore, and head up to Philly that way. And I looked on my phone, and that would have been like a six-hour drive. And it's 8 o'clock at night. It was like 7 o'clock when I was looking into that. And I'm kind of tired as it is. And I'm like, I don't think I have it in me. I have, you know, 12 hours till my flight. That's a six-hour drive. I haven't eaten or anything. And I'd want to take my time on the uh, pull-offs on the Bay Bridge. So I'm like, that is a stretch. So I'm like, the only way that's going to work as if I fly home from somewhere else. So I was looking into the flights home from either Norfolk or Richmond. And they weren't that expensive, you know, considering it's, you know, on 12 hours notice. There's about 135 from either of those airports. But I didn't want to just, you know, shell out another 135 just to see the bridge when it was getting dark and I was tired. So I was really tempted to do that, but all things considered it wasn't in the cards today so i'm heading back up through the delmarva peninsula to philadelphia uh, still in virginia gonna hit uh, maryland in a little while here and then work my way up through delaware so i've been to the i've been to delaware before i've been as far south as dover um but south of dover delaware i hadn't been to any of the delmarva peninsula until today so that's just how I am with travel. It's like I'm really tempted if I'm like, oh, I can go and do this right now, or I can go and see this, That's it'll be possible. I'm only a few hours away. Like, that's just how I am. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go, let's do it. And then I actually think about it. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And sometimes I'm like, okay, that's a really long drive. I'm pretty tired. That's not going to end well. And, yeah, hey, the, the life of an adventurer... That's just what it is. And I'm definitely not complaining. You know, I love my life. I'm thankful to be doing what I'm doing and going on all these trips so many times. Running around all over the place. I love it. I love it. Here's a look at the scenery before it gets dark. I'm glad I got the F-150. I was just, um, my, I was just booked for an economy car on my original reservation. And I'm really glad I got the F-150 because it just fits in so much better down here. All right, it has been quite some time since the last clip. It's 2.43 in the morning. Had a very uneventful but enjoyable ride up the Delmarva Peninsula, up through Delaware. I'm now in Middletown, Delaware, in the uh, northern part of the state. I'm parked here in a park and ride lot. Going to get a few hours of sleep before it's time to hustle off to the Philadelphia airport for my flight home. 7 o'clock flight. Um... If I can lay down for two or three hours here, I'm going to just recline this driver's seat. And it, the drive was very enjoyable, but what was not enjoyable was finding food. In Delaware, after like um, 11 or 10 or 11, there's nothing. 
I mean, I wasn't hungry until... I started to kind of get hungry around 10, and when I was, like, really ready to eat, it was after 11. And there was just nothing open. Um, even the because of the coronavirus crap, even the fast food was closed by 11. Um, so there was, um, like, a handful of pizza places that were open. I was in uh, Dover, Delaware, when I was trying to eat, by the way. Middle of the state, uh, same town the NASCAR track's in. And uh, there was, like, two pizza huts in Dover, um, a local pizza place, all of which were supposed to be open, according to the maps and the online information. The local place uh, just didn't answer the phone. And the two pizza huts were doing delivery only. You couldn't get a pickup order, which was pretty annoying. Um, so I ended up at Wawa, and I got a um, garlic, uh, what was it? No, I think I got a garlic and parmesan meatball sub, something like that. I'm exhausted. So I'm, I, I'm just exhausted. I'm not exactly with it right now. It was a really frustrating experience trying to find something to eat and then just settling on the uh, gas station food. But um, yeah, it's all good. You know, I, I had a really good meatball sub. It ended up being really, really good. And I had a, a quart of chocolate milk with it. It felt like something different. And so now I'm about 50 minutes from the Philadelphia International Airport. Um, yeah, just part big, big, big park and ride lot. Middletown, Delaware. Um, yeah, there's not much more to, to it than that. I'm not going to make tomorrow a separate video because all I'm doing is going home on a 7 a.m. flight. So this whole trip's going to be the same vlog. And I'm going to catch a nap. I'll talk to you after. What a clusterfuck. So I fly on average about every two to three weeks. And this is the most messed up airport experience I've ever had. I'm laughing about it. I'm smiling. But <laughs> just something else. <laughs> so the fire alarm is still going off as I record this. But let me uh, start from the beginning. So, where I left off, I was going to sleep in the uh, rental truck in um, Delaware, in uh, Middletown, Delaware, at the park and ride lot. And I overslept by 45 minutes. So, I was racing to get here. And my flight was at 7. I got to the Philadelphia airport at. 6:20. I returned the F-150 to Enterprise. By the time I got on the shuttle, like Enterprise was great. I told them I was running behind, and they got me out of there in a hurry. So Enterprise was fantastic, like usual. But um, when I get into the airport, it's um, it's actually fairly crowded, despite you know the ways of the world right now. And there were probably a hundred. Very roughly speaking, like, I don't know, 60 to 100 people in line. There was one uh, security checkpoint open with two podiums for ID check. And there was no pre-check. But the signage was set up so that you'd think pre-check was still open, even though it wasn't. So it was, um, there was me and a couple other people that had pre-check that were walking up to where the signage was that made it look like pre-check was right there, even though it wasn't, just to get told, oh, there's only one line, you got to wait in the regular line today. So that just pushed me over the edge, because I mean, again, I did oversleep a little bit, but I should have still been able to make it. 
So that just pushed it over the edge. I knew I wasn't going to make the flight waiting in that line. So I go back downstairs to the ticketing check-in. And like I've said before, when something's going on, you call the airline. You don't um, wait in the line. You get the best result on the phone. So that's exactly what I did. And they told me, um, I explained the situation. I'm like, the line's a mile long. There's no pre-check. You know, not much I could have done. And they were surprisingly pretty understanding. Um, they took care of it for me. I was supposed to be on that 7 o'clock flight. My new flight's an hour later, 7.59 a.m., Philly to Boston, Logan. And I'm technically on standby, but the uh, coronavirus, there's so many empty seats, I'm going to be fine. And um, so I thought that was going to be the end of it. And... Um, so I, I had to, I did, they did everything over the phone and I got, you know, um, an email confirming everything. I just had to go to the ticket agent in person here and they finalized it because that had to be done in person apparently. So I did that. Um, and, uh, you know, it was all set. Got my boarding pass for 7.59 and going up to wait in that big line that I was expecting this time. I didn't have to take off my shoes, like it was a pre-check screening experience when you got to the physical screening, but the identity verification was one line for everybody. So uh, the end result was I wait in the line, I get there, and then there's me and a few other people going through the pre-check screening, and right as I'm putting my bag into the bin and putting it on the belt, the fire alarm starts going off, and at first the TSA agents are like, okay, everything has to freeze, the checkpoint's closing. You know, we can't screen any more people right now. And the guy in front of me was just bullshit. He was losing it. I was kind of keeping my distance from him because if he had a meltdown and they, like, called security, I didn't want to be, you know, associated with that. Um, but, you know, he calmed down and got through. Hopefully he makes his flight. He was in the same situation as I was, being frustrated with no pre-check. Um, and he was with his wife who was, like, trying to calm him down. But anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there at this point. So that only stops for maybe two or three minutes and then the TSA kind of just shrug and they start screening people again. So I'm able to get through because I was like putting my bag on the conveyor belt at this point. So I got right through pre-check and I'm into the airport. I took that video clip of the fire alarm going off. It's been going off for probably 15 minutes at this point. But they have not evacuated the building or anything like that. As far as I can tell, nothing, nothing is on fire. There's just nothing. It's, it appears to be a false alarm. Um, so yeah, that's where things are at right now. I just uh, sat down here and recorded this part of the vlog. I probably, I don't know how I'm going to slice this up. If I'll just include it with yesterday or because of the interestingness, I might, uh, you know, um, interestingness of this whole situation. I might uh, make its own video. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I'll, uh, I'll keep it with me. Well, uh, well, I board the. Usually, I would end the vlog here, but I'll keep you with me today. Yeah, so Philadelphia has never been one of my favorite airports. Anyway, I think it's laid out really weird. But it appears the fire alarm just turned off, so it was probably on for 20 minutes. With uh, it just being all but completely ignored by everybody, passengers, employees alike. All right, everything's pretty normal. Made it whole world of myself, they said, which I expected. <sighs> what a morning. Give your attention to the flight attendants. Luggage and personal articles should be stowed either overhead or under the seat. If you haven't already fastened your seatbelt, insert the metal fitting into the...